Welcome back to another episode of Agency Journey. This week, I've got the pleasure of bringing on a special guest. I've got Amber Mackay, who's the head of client services at Finally Agency from across the pond. Amber, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. You wrote uh, an awesome blog post recently. They got my attention. Um, I think it was it's like, what is an NPS score and why does it mm-hmm. matter? Um, it, which I'll go pull up here in just a second. But so you... Um, I, I want to dig into that. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to, to pull you on and kind of dig into uh, what prompted you to start paying attention to NPS, how you've improved it, how you focused on it. Kind of, We'll break down uh, all those pieces. But first, could you just give us a quick overview of Finally Agency and your role there? Yeah, of course. So um, Finally Agency is an inbound marketing agency. Uh, We're based in Canterbury in Kent in the UK. Um, We specialize in the engineering and manufacturing industry. um, And we have a a multidisciplinary team spanning digital, web development, video, uh, graphic design. And we are also a platinum HubSpot partner as well, uh, which runs through an awful lot of what we do. Um, my role as head of client services um, is essentially to head up the account management team. Um, I'm generally responsible for kind of ongoing client success, uh, project success, uh, which means I work really closely with our management team, um, our head of ops, um, to kind of ensure everything runs smoothly and that we've got all the processes in place um, to consistently get the best possible results for our clients, basically. Um, I am also an account manager day to day as well. So um I do keep keep my finger on the pulse um, and I'm heavily kind of involved in the day-to-day, which really does help me work really closely with my team to kind of make improvements almost every day. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's busy, but it's good fun. Right. What's the model that you have? So you've got account managers. Um, so you're kind of see, you know overseeing a team plus being on that team of account managers and they're using a pod structure beneath that or shared resources. How, how's the internal team structured? Um, so no, so, well, so internally, I mean, our account managers are, um, they're kind of more seen as project leads. So we, uh, yeah. that's actually another interesting, an interesting point that we're kind of looking into is kind of the hybrid between account management and project management. Um, I'm not sure necessarily the industry kind of knows the difference. Um, but we, we do an awful lot of, um, of product, le- product leadership. We're involved in the strategy. Um, but we are kind of at, at the top of, of, of every project that we do. And then we, we manage the, the kind of the, the delivery teams. Um, but we don't have pods. We have, uh, myself included, we have three, act, three account managers, three project leads, um, and we kind of deal with all of the projects that we've got. We kind of just split them out. <laughs> right. In an average week then between your own client, and I would assume you're probably interfacing with your clients on a weekly basis. You know, weekly Sometimes calls, daily, be, to be fair. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How many calls between your own clients then that you're managing and kind of jumping, I'm assuming probably occasionally you're jumping on other people's calls with them or maybe maybe you're not, but how many how much of your week is spent on calls then? Um, goodness me. Um, I mean, but to, to be honest, between internal meetings, uh, which we do, we do, you know, we, we keep in touch regularly and client calls. Um, I'd say a good half of my week definitely is, is, is speaking to clients. Um, it is a big part of what we do. Um, especially my role as, as kind of making sure everything, everything's uh, happening as it should do. I do join calls with my, with my project managers, but a huge part of what our project managers do is manage their projects. Um, we, you know, we have a lot of power to, to kind of crack on and, and get the best out of our clients and we have really good relationships with them. So um, yeah, we, we do speak to them an awful lot, um, depending on the client, depending on the project. Uh, it, it might be that we speak to them, to them daily. Sometimes it might only be weekly, smaller ones. It might be, it might be uh, bi-weekly or monthly, but we are regularly in touch with them right that makes sense so let's talk a little bit about mps then as you're implementing the reason i ask about uh, call volume is you've got a lot going on so i'm assuming that's part of where the need for mps the need for having hey i need some quantitative measure of how likely are we to retain these customers obviously at the end of the day for agencies the metric we're looking at is uh, or on a customer by customer basis, kind of lifetime value, which is your indicator of how successful are we at retaining clients plus upselling them, yeah. or, you know, yeah. getting them on the on the right services and capturing the value that we're hopefully delivering for them. So NPS is kind of a leading indicator to that. Yeah. But what was when did you decide? Kind of what what's the prompt for it? And then when did you decide to start implementing NPS? 
Um, so the M, I mean, the MPS process for us is actually um, is actually quite new. Um, I became head of client services last year, and this was one of the first things that I ever really sunk my teeth into. So we we really sort of started running it at the start of the year. Um, it wasn't working very well to begin with. The uh, the kind of the in, the initial um, the initial process we have wasn't great. Uh, the uptake wasn't great. Um, so we kind of we changed that up, and that's now a, a really well practiced process that we we continue to replicate. Um, it it was it was kind of it was a goal of mine. Um, I, I kind of saw that as a as a really good way to to start making some improvements in in my department um, that kind of separated my role from just project management. Um, it, it was kind of a, a way to improve my um, improve my department. Um, but having an MPS score as a metric was kind of is just one thing. Um, it, it's a really useful benchmark. Um, you know, you can add it to business reports. It's something to continue, continually measure on. Um, it gives a bit more of a scientific view of, of everything that's going on, but it's, for me, it's still really only the first step. Um, so for us, it's, it's more asking the MPS question, but then getting the feedback, um, is actually really, really important because we instantly act on that feedback. Um, we, you know, we kind of always, we take what our, our clients say, um, and then we make that actionable and we, we actually, we go and do it straight away. So it, it means that improvements are happening straight away um, and that we're constantly learning. Um, and obviously the improvements we make means more success internally and, and externally with our clients as well, which hopefully in turn means uh, more recommendations to work with us. Right. Well, I guess first thing we should do here is just break down kind of NPS, what it is. So mm -hmm. NPS obviously stands for net promoter score. It's the question everyone's seen a million times, which is on a scale yeah. one to 10, I'd like for you to refer this product or service to a friend or colleague. Um, and then, from an equation perspective, it kind of breaks down into these three different uh, buckets of promoters, which are your nines or your tens, kind of passives, yeah. which are the sevens or eights, and then detractors, which are um, your zero to six. You used a word in this post that I was like, first of all, uh, how British. Second, I didn't, I had the wrong impression. You said promoters are chuffed and loyal brand ambassadors. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I thought chuffed meant the opposite way. Like I'm a little bit upset. Chuffed oh, is actually okay. <laughs> no, in British, chuffed means super happy. <laughs> okay. This is this is great to know. So what what's a synonym for chuffed? Is this just like excited or does it mean something else? Um satisfied, like su super satisfied, like really Got happy. It. Uh yeah. Okay. So then and then obviously to get your score, you're taking your percentage of your promoters and subtracting the percentage of detractors. So if we just make the math real easy, if you have 10 people respond to this and you've got uh, six people who give you a nine or a 10, then you've got 60% of your audience is promoters. And if you have two people who are your detractors, that's 20%. So 60 minus 20 is 40. And you've got a four, your score is a 40 uh, on the MPS route. You so, did that much, much quicker than I would have been able to. I actually have a really handy website that helps me do the calculations because math's not my strong awesome. point. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, I've spent more time in NPS in the last couple of years than uh, oh, okay, than I, I would like to. Um, although I I do I, I like the the tool itself. I think it's a handy kind of uh, metric that you can use and can be somewhat standard across places. But there's a lot of variables which we'll get into um, that are challenging. So industry average here, and I think you mentioned in the post it's around six. Uh, Retently put out some stuff a couple of years ago that it, or a year and a half ago maybe that industry average in the services or in the agencies uh, space specifically is like sixty two, and that's obviously coming from it's an MPS tool. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the technical pieces, and then I want to get into impact and the strategic side of what you've built out. So mm -hmm. technically, are you using HubSpot to measure NPS, or what tool are you using to send and manage NPS service? So yes, we did. We did use HubSpot. Um, we used automated emails, which meant that people would uh, would kind of drop into workflows depending on their lifecycle stages um, and any of the specific uh, kind of categories we put them in. Um, it wasn't working. Um, the uptake was not great. Uh, people's, I mean, everyone's busy. People's inboxes are full anyway. Um, so now, um, so to speak, I am the tool. <laughs> uh, me with my slide presentation um, on the call with my account manager. We are we're the ones doing it now. So it's it's technically a manual process, but it's actually not really a process at all. It's actually a conversation. Okay. So you're actually asking them, are you reading, are you saying that script verbatim to them on a scale of one to 10? Yep. 
<laughs> and then we, well we change it a little bit um you, we kind of sort of usually we sort of say on a scale of one to ten or you know not to ten how likely are you to recommend us or how much do you love us is sometimes if we're really close to them we, we might sure. change it but sure. yeah so then they're giving you an answer where are you does that live in a google spreadsheet or where are you putting that information uh, it does live in a spreadsheet yes we have uh we have a agency scorecard uh which is it covers all sorts of different metrics that we report on uh bi-weekly and it lives in there and it gets updated each every every couple of weeks yep okay makes sense and then obviously their follow-up question is you know what's the i assume you're following that up with why do you give the score that you give yeah. or they go yeah, right exactly right. yeah makes sense and then that's where you're talking about hey we're taking actions then off of what what feedback they give yeah, exactly that. Okay, makes sense. Um, how frequently are you asking people? So we ask all of our retainer clients at least every quarter. Um, so that means every three months we have um, we have a proper meeting with them where we have um, a, a shortish presentation where we might go over um, activities from the last three months, uh, what's coming up over the next three months, what's going well, what's not going so well. Um, and then we always ask that question right at the end. Um, if they are just smaller project clients, we'll probably tend to ask at the end of that project on delivery. Yep. That makes sense. And then in terms of who gets surveyed, I'm assuming most of the time on client calls, you've got one point of contact, maybe, maybe two. And I, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, so we we ask um, every client gets asked. Um, we we are we're in the we're in the process of uh, asking everyone as we go along, but everyone will at some point be asked, um, and it is it will be the key stakeholders that deal with the uh, with their project lead um, on an ongoing basis. Okay, so if you uh, just to say back to you then, if you've got let's say we're dealing you're dealing with the marketing manager at a manufacturer, uh, but the VP of marketing or you know owner of the business depending on the size of the business. Um, is the one writing the checks but not getting on calls with you? Are you sending that via email then or are you calling them directly at some point or just trying to pull them into a call to ask that question like on a quarterly planning call? How are you making sure, I guess, that you get the touch points who maybe impact the decision but aren't on the weekly calls with you? Yeah, um, we're actually really lucky at Finally Agency. We um, we work with uh, the clients that we work with in general. We are always in touch with the key decision maker. So we're either we either speak to the CEO, the MDs, or as you say, the people writing the checks. We are right, we right. are fully uh, in contact with them. If they're not on the quarterly retainer calls for whatever reason, if they're busy, yes, we would always give them a, give them a call and we would speak to them separately. Um, as I say, the the key is to speak to the people that you are dealing with every day because they are the ones that can tell you how well or how well you're not doing <laughs> right okay so let's talk about the impact uh first of all mm -hmm. you wrote uh in here about kind of your takeaways and experience with nps so what is finally agencies nps so we are currently uh running at 80 um so uh we have approximately 25 clients um that we're currently working with on on kind of various levels that number's probably bigger um but you know on, on different various levels um and because the process is fairly new, we are still working our way through a lot of those um, and depending on kind of where they are at their life cycle. Um, but as I say, that they, everyone gets asked regularly enough that we are, um, we are constantly reporting on that number. Are you leveraging that? Do you know if, or um, it seems like that's a number that I would want to be pointing out. <laughs> there are NPS internally. Um, I don't know that we've ever done a huge public push on it, but, but we should. Uh, or we could, I guess, is another way to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, you certainly could as well. Obviously, anytime that you're picking out a metric, if that's not the industry accepted metric, you know, it's hard to say, well, we're an 80 and someone else, it's all internally reported. So anybody can just say, yeah, we're a 98. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> on our, on our score. But are you, are you all using that in your market? Obviously, it's on the blog, which is super cool that you wrote about it and, and uh, put yourself out there. But are you using that in marketing or sales at all? Um, currently not as a metric, no, um, and that, but that kind of brings me back to the point of it's not that the metric and the number itself is only really the starting point. So the biggest thing for us, um, is the feedback and then the positivity or, you know, the, the, the structural, um, help that clients give us when they give us feedback. Right. Um, so a big one for us um, is customer testimonials. Um, and we, we usually, we have a videographer in house and we do a lot of video work. Um, and a project that we we obviously used to work on post COVID, uh, pre COVID, sorry, was uh, was heading out a meeting with our clients. We now we will be doing that more again. Um, and the best part of it is that 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 is it. Your clients are your are, you know your biggest selling point. So for us, the metric is the starting point, and then going out to those clients that 
we work brilliantly with and getting a testimonial from them, recording us having an interview with them and discussing our, our projects and all that stuff. And then reporting on the results of the projects, which we always do. We always, we post a lot of case studies. We post a lot of result, uh, results reports. Um, all of that material gathered together with the metric um, is just such a fantastic story to sell. Right. So you are, I've got so many different questions here, but you're three quarters into running NPS now, as we're recording this, it's the beginning of, of Q4 here. So mm. um, how has that been? Are you, do clients know uh, who aren't your clients uh, or have a, are working with a different account manager to know, oh, Amber's on the call, I'm going to get asked NPS or how's that <laughs> uh, repeat conversation been? Um. No, I think or if they see me on the call, they think, what have we done wrong? No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. My, um, no, I think because we, it's, it's part of the process now. Um, our project leads ask, we, we ask the question all the time. They, they expect it to come up. Um, it's, it's not supposed to be an intimidating question. Um, it's not supposed to be a question where they suddenly think if I'm honest, I'm going to upset someone or, you know, I'm just going to give them loads of great positive praise because that's all we want to do. It's not supposed to be a difficult question. It's supposed to be, um, a conversation starter. It's supposed to open up about, you know, it's meant to be transparent. Um, it's meant to help our, help our communication going forward. So, um, yeah, the more we ask our clients, kind of actually, the more they get into it, and the more that they see that it's helpful. Um, I think it's always a slightly strange question to be asked for the first time, um, and it does it, it can put you on the spot. But I think if you can't answer that question, or if it's an uncomfortable question that you're asked, and you don't want to say it there and then, we've got work to do anyway. Um, so it, to me, the honesty is 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 really helpful both ways. And if you're not honest, you're not you know you, everyone's doing each other a disservice, really. Right. Right. Well, I think you. Uh, there's a couple of things that I like about what you're doing that are really cool and that are different from what I would normally recommend to people. One is we, so in our NPS setup, I want to isolate the person that, that they have a relationship from, from the person who's asking the question. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want them to have to give me an answer in front of the person they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Cause I think that is easy to kind of buy, you know, you don't want to, you have to make a decision in that moment. Do I want to potentially offend somebody who I'm going to work with or talk to on a daily basis? And I have some type of relationship with, um, but you've mentioned a couple of different things here. One is it's part of your process. So you mentioned the uptake rate and what that normally then looks like for agencies is sending out emails and nobody, mm -hmm. if you introduce that to 25 clients today, who've never had to do that before, most of the time they're just going to ignore that. So the cool thing about running a services based business is you get to make whatever the rules are around how, what it's like to work with you. So if you set strong expectations on the front end for every new client who's working with us, this is just part of what you do when you work with us. You pay your monthly bills, you show up to your calls on time, and you have to answer your NPS survey. And that's like those those are non-negotiables. You get to make those yeah. rules and set them up. And so you've uh, forced that on people by doing it on a call. And then the real key is exactly what you said, which is NPS is a great metric. It's awesome to put on a scorecard and to work around. And you need those central points. But the real magic is not asking people the survey question. The real magic is what do you do with the answers from that? And, and how do you continue to build and strengthen those relationships um you'd mentioned hey, we're, we're taking action right away off so someone tells you hey i'm an eight they're a passive um uh, the obvious question is you know what's one thing we could have done to to make your experience better or, you know what's the difference why did you not score it lower than that why did you not score it higher than that you got all these different follow-up questions um are there any specific examples that come to mind of how you've dealt with that feedback um right away to improve client relationships um, I think largely, usually, I mean, it would come, I think communication is a big one. Um, you know, sometimes if, if a particularly busy period, um, you know, communication can sometimes fall down. I mean, that's both sides. Um, a lot of the work we do relies quite heavily on client input. Um, you know, from an education point of view, we're working in quite a technical sector. So a lot of the time we rely heavily on our clients being able to give us information and give us answers so that we can create content or we can create campaigns that are, technically and uh that are technically correct to their industry so we do rely quite heavily on their input um and you know if our communication isn't strong enough and we don't make that um we don't make that clear from the outset um sometimes if things are held up because we're waiting on things from their side um you know that that can be quite frustrating from on, on both sides of the, both sides of it so um that that does come up quite often um and you know once we've spoken about it we said how can we make that process easier how can we um not add to your to-do list, but see us as, 
you know, something crucial that you have to do, you know, every other day or something during the week, um, you know, we work with them to make it as easy as we possibly can. Right. That makes sense. And then, so I guess a couple of questions. Is there a point at which, let's say you're talking to an agency, uh, which we are right now, obviously, <laughs> but they're uh, thinking about MPS or this conversation as I'm wondering, should we implement it? Is there a team that's too small to bother setting up MPS? Or is there a point where you're like, hey, it needs 25 people sounded, 25 clients sounded right, or 10 clients would have been the right place to put? Is there a right place to put these types of metrics in place and systems? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think obviously the the smaller you are, um, you know, we we have a, a handful of clients that we adore. Uh, well, I should say, obviously, we adore working with all of our clients. We love all of our clients, but you know, we we have a we do have a selection of clients we've worked with for a long time. We have really well established relationships with um, who would always score us really really highly, um, and of course, they feed into the great score that we do have. Um, but time and time again, we do great things. Um, we will always have the odd thing that we can improve on and we can do and we continue to do better. But, you know, if you've, if you've only got a small number of clients and they all love you, um, you're, it's going to inflate and you're going to look fantastic. Um, you know, I'd, but then again, that's that's where it comes into it. It's, it is just a metric and that's only the starting point. You should always be asking, no matter how many clients you have, you should always be asking them, how well are we doing? What can we do better? That's the biggest part of it. Um, I think maybe yeah, the, the, maybe the met, the metric side of things you you could probably have a limit. Um, otherwise, you'll be as I say in, inflated and look and look much better than you are. <laughs> Not necessarily true, I'm sure. Every you know you know people are, are fantastic, but um, but but yeah, I, I would I would say I'd say you you need to take you do need to take that into account. Right, that makes sense. And then, um, and I didn't prep you to go down this road, but you mentioned something earlier that always uh catches my attention. You mentioned scorecard. Are you running? on the EOS uh, or do you have yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on that scorecard then on a weekly basis, are there other, uh, feel free to share what you're comfortable sharing or not sure what you're not comfortable sharing, but what are some of the other key metrics that you care about from, uh, I'm thinking specifically of your role, kind of leading client success at an agency. What are some of those metrics that you care about? Um, so our, I mean, our EOS system is, is we, we have all the, the team leaders from all of our, all, all the delivery teams are in there. So, um, from a digital point of view, I mean, we, we report on the number of marketing leads we've received that, that month, um, or, you know, within, I think we do them bi-weekly as we report on that quite, quite heavily. Um, my NPS score is in there. We, we report on business one that week. We, uh, we, we report on our, our financial status, uh, which is obviously helpful from us internally. Um, the number of blogs written, the number of blogs published, that sort of thing, because mm -hmm. we, you know, we put out there quite a lot about how important education is and we do a lot of content for our clients. We then practice what we preach and then we do a lot of that as well. So, um, we report on quite a wide spectrum of, of of things, to be honest, but just because we have everybody in our, in our, in our company, um, in our agency, management wise comes to those meetings and reports on what their teams are doing right that's awesome so in those blogging numbers those are your internal like the finally agency yeah. content production that's awesome um one of the things i think obviously the challenge with mentioned earlier like lifetime value of clients is one of the biggest metrics to pay attention to the problem is it's too you don't know the lifetime value of someone until they're no longer <laughs> until that lifetime is yeah. ended. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're really trying to use NPS as kind of a proxy for mm -hmm. is how, how likely are we to retain clients when you get clients who say a six or lower, they're a detractor. What is in your playbook or what are some of your go-tos? Like what are the things that you are looking to do to fix and how do you know when to draw the line between saying this relationship is not working, we're better off moving on from them versus hey, this is one that we just have a, an issue in communication or we don't, we haven't had enough time to, you know, expectations are just off a little bit here, but it's a, it's a good account that we should still continue working. It's a really tricky situation. Um, I have to say we are lucky that we've not been in that situation very often. Um, and to be honest, if you have a detractor, um, who is not happy, um, the chances are you already know about it. So it's not going to be a surprise when it comes to that retainer review. It's not going to be a surprise when you suddenly have that, that meeting to discuss the activities, you will know that things aren't going well. Um, 
and hopefully you would have already been starting to do things to to make that better as much you know whatever is in your power to make better you're already doing that so that when you're having these regular meetings you say well you know we've, we've tried to do this and here's what we've implemented and here's how this has helped and here's how this hasn't and you know it's a constant iterative process but um unfortunately there are you know you do you do have those clients where unfortunately the relationship is for whatever reason on whatever side is is not ideal um we would always schedule up follow-up calls uh we would always uh i i would always say you know oh, we can take this offline and, and you and i can have a conversation uh separate from the delivery teams and really get to the get to the bottom of it um and get that feedback through um and again a huge part of what we do is uh retrospective meetings um as well so you know, we're always talking about how great projects are and we go through retrospectives and we talk about, yes, we need to do this again. And yes, this was great. Let's let's replicate it. Um, but we have to you really have to focus on the negatives as well. You have to focus on what is not going so well, um, whether that's when a client if and when a client leaves or even if it's just the end of a project, there's always going to going to be things that you could do better. Um, but I think I think the main the main point of communication and what we really strive to do is to is to, for nothing to ever be a surprise um we are we speak to our clients so regularly um and we're in touch regularly and reporting all the time and we re report monthly that if a problem comes up we would have faced it head on um and, it, and it's not seen as it's not seen as something that you know will absolutely kill the relationship and um you know as i say we we, we try our best at all times and we we learn and we and we keep going right okay let's flip the script then to the other side you're most chuffed you're you're 10 <laughs> uh you're best promoters what's the are there standard act you mentioned we care about testimonials and refer mm -hmm. like getting uh referrals back in that's one of the items on our school we're running eos as well one of the things that we look at, at on a weekly basis uh outside of nps is on the scorecard as well and nps by service line but um but we care about how many of those people who say they love us are actually doing what promoters do and promoting us um as well because that's a huge growth lever. Um, are there go-to things when you say, someone says, say we're a 10, like are you going right into, will you leave us a clutch review or will you, do you make, you know, do you have anybody in mind who you can make a recommendation to? Are there go-to things that you have or is it case by case? Uh, and what's the playbook on that side? Um, I think it's probably case by case um, and would largely depend on whether they're a retainer or a project client with us. But I think the, the go-to for us would always be to at least gather a testimonial, which we would pop on our website. Um, we then are, we're, we're hot on social media. LinkedIn is, is a, is a big platform that we use for our clients and for ourselves. So any testimonials, um, any, you know, client videos that we do we're always we'd be then sharing on social they then be you know they become part of our our marketing journeys um and and again we we do written case studies on our websites as well where, where we we kind of show for example if it was a rebrand we'd show what the client looked like before and what they look like now we'd then include a testimonial if we were lucky to have got a video with them we would include that as well and it and i think our um our, our website and our linkedin channel is kind of our, our, our biggest push for that for that sort of thing so one of the things i'm gonna give a shout out here to jeremy wise who runs Rise 25 along with John Corcoran. Uh, they run the podcast um, right now for us. But one of the things that they do really well is around social proof. So Jeremy and I were on a Zoom. This was like a couple months ago. And I was just telling him it has been a, a great experience. And uh, right away, he was like, in, in that moment, he's like, hey, look, we're on Zoom already. Let's just record it real quickly. And so it made it super easy. No, No extra friction for me. To go record a 90 second or two minute long kind of testimonial snippet. Here's been my experience uh, working with them. And so that opportunity, like in that moment, the cool thing about you asking folks live is you get the opportunity right then to say, hey, let's schedule you either schedule follow up right then or you can get it, uh, capture it in that moment. Um, so that makes that makes a ton of sense. Are you normally lining up? I would assume, if, especially if you're doing a longer case study, you're probably lining up a, a follow up call off of that versus recording live. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, our, our case studies take a little bit of time to put together because we, we, we kind of, we write the content around it. Uh, we go back and we, we pull all the stats and we do, uh, we do some sort of like number crunching to, to kind of really hone in on what we, where we were benchmarking and then where we are now. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, if, if ever things are, if, you know, when things are going great, we grab a testimonial, um, even if it's literally just typing away what that person has said, and then we can, we can make it into testimonial later and then they can, they can just approve it before we put it anywhere. Um, if it's, yeah, if it's a case that we want to do and we, or, you know, we, we want to put them as part of that new customer testimonial video project that we have, um, we, we tend to, we tend to put those in and we actually tend to do, uh, more videoing with them, uh, with them during those, those sessions. So we might, we might capture um campaign footage at, at the same time as capturing our own uh testimony so it doesn't feel like they are <laughs> they're just working hard to promote us we also right. then we return the favor when we do some some campaign work or you know we we, we have another meeting when we're there and, and it's it's just it's just kind of part of, of building a relationship really it's just kind of it's it just feels it feels like a natural relationship builder for sure that's awesome well, Amber, this has been really fun. You've given uh, given folks a lot to think about and a lot of helpful feedback and just firsthand experience kind of running NPS. So let's let's point people to a couple of places. Um, one is obviously finally.agency, which we'll include in the show notes, is the agency site. Um, is there anywhere else that you'd want to um, direct people? Is the best place to go connect on LinkedIn or is there a better way to, to reach out and connect with you? Absolutely. No, connect, connect with me on LinkedIn, um, connect with the rest of the finally team on LinkedIn. Um, we also, uh, we have our own, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, seen or heard of, of us promoting the engine room, uh, which is, uh, kind of a, a webinar slash podcast that we do. Um, that's another great, you can follow that hashtag on LinkedIn hashtag finally engine room, uh, where we give out all sorts of different, um, help and advice uh, from social media all the way through to web and digital and SEO and that sort of thing. Um, the resource section on our website is, is fantastic. Uh, we, we, we're writing blogs all the time and it, and it's the people in our agency actually writing the blogs on their discipline. So we are, we're regularly posting all sorts of new things up there. So um, yeah, absolutely find us on LinkedIn and you won't be able to, you won't miss us. We, we talk on there an awful lot. That's awesome. Cool. Well, we'll make sure we link up to the engine room and uh, all of the resources that you mentioned here, but Amber, I appreciate it. Thanks for making time and coming on with me today. No worries. Thank you very much for having me.